What's up, you guys? I'm on location today. We are checking out a product in this unfinished house here, but we are checking out a new product, a innovative style of air supply and return register. You guys come check it out. It's called Fusion Air. We're going to go talk to Wayne about it real quick. Wayne, how's it going? Hey. Nice to meet you, Matt. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. We got Wayne Jones here from Fusion Air, and he's going to tell us a little bit about it. So what exactly is Fusion Air at its basics here? So okay. tell us exactly what we're dealing with. I mean, can you imagine walking in? We're so used to walking in a house and having AC grills everywhere. And they're always in the wrong place as well, right, yeah. Matt? Just they're so frustrating, so ugly. But can you imagine walking in and not having seen any AC grills? That's basically what Fusion Air really is. We're able to take the existing lighting plan of these new homes with all recessed lighting and we're just replacing it with our product. So it's, it's essentially a recessed light with a, a supply or return duct integrated into it. Yeah, can I show you one right Absolutely. here? Absolutely, let's take a look. So here's a down example. So we see it actually comes with R8 insulation. We also make one coming on the 90. Okay. Because any, any room downstairs, we have to come in on the side. Right, yeah, like so, we have some over there that have in this cathedral type ceiling, they're coming in on the side. So that's probably what you're talking about. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah, okay. But and this he, one's for just a straight down. Straight right, down. and we all used to six inch. That's yeah. why they all come with six inch. Right. And the beautiful today's houses are built so tight, we need less airflow. Right. So six inch is really about the perfect size. Right. In some rooms we need two. So we'll go an eight to that room and then six, six to it. But the beautiful thing- Oh, so you run an eight, eight, eight inch duct to the room and then split off with two sixes. So that's how you're getting more CFM is just right. adding more of these, running a bigger duct and splitting them off. Got it. But here's what sets us apart from most is this grill. that comes in, after, this is the rough end portion. Right. This is the grill that we do a trim out. Okay. If you notice, it throws air 360 all the way around. Right, so that's you were telling me about this. So yeah. it's not just the fact that we have a, a duct, a supply duct, or a return that is integrated into a light fixture and they're inter integrated together, but it's also the how it disperses air right. that makes it very unique. And if, you're if, if I'm understanding this correctly, so you've got an electrical connection inside here, and then this plugs right into that, and then this supply register essentially becomes a light but the air is distributed not only in these holes right here but is it up here too is yeah all the way on? around 360 and this is the reason why it doesn't just come straight down it's actually distributed right. all the way around right. and the air yeah, that comes straight down mixes with that air out here right which throws it further right and that way you have far better coverage than any grill in the market really cool stuff yeah. man. really cool stuff and this is spun aluminum so okay it's a lifetime warranty yeah it seems really heavy duty like yeah. this it, when you look at it, you feel like it's going to be plastic and, and, and really right. light and kind of cheap looking, but it's actually feels very sturdy, very nice. And some custom homes, they, we get it standard in black. Okay. So if you've got some custom home wants it some different color, you give us the, the SKU and we'll, we'll, we'll special do it for you. And we have some smoke tests done that I'll share with you. Yeah. And it'll show the difference between a two-way grill, a three-way grill, and then ours. Right. And you see the better coverage. I've actually seen some of these done. He sent me some examples of that. And it, it is quite amazing because you sent me some examples of some standard supply registers, right? And some of them just go straight down. Some of them go down and out. You can really see when they send smoke through that where the air is going. And it's amazing to see the difference because nothing's actually getting the entire room. But you send smoke through this fusion air system and it is encapsulating the whole no room. Way. It just goes everywhere as soon as it goes through this thing. So it really does seem to, from that vantage point, seem to be very well functioning. This is the first house in the city of Houston. We just passed inspection. So we're all legal here and all accepted by the city. I'll be of the judge of that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> but here's another thing because the house is so tight today and right. everyone's going to inverter technology. Right and lower tonnage. Right. This house back in the 70s would be a two four ton units. Yeah. I'm two two ton units. Right. Less airflow. Right. But, but you're but you've got uh, an ERV and I'm assuming a dehumidifier as well. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But, we but talk about the, that. But the Mitsubishi units that we're installing here have inverted technology. Right. Once this house is cool, it'd be running 20 to 30% capacity all the time. Yeah. So I, even though I only need 60 CFM in this room, I'm not, I'm only at 30% of that. Right. And so how do I move that air? Right. All the other standard grills give me problems. I got hot spots all throughout their house. Definitely. With this technology, it has solved that issue. Right. All right. So what do we got here? So Matt, this is the master dwelling, master okay. uh, area suite. So what, this is a good example where I used the existing floor, um, lighting diagrams from the, from the engineer. 
Yeah. So I didn't mess it up. All I did is replaced it. I used this one with our device. It's a return. Okay. The one behind you as a supply. Okay. Then this one as a supply. So I need a little bit over 100 CFM. Right. So one wouldn't quite do it. Right. This way you'll never hear it running. Right. But now I got the perfect airflow going on. Right, right. Doing that. So this, so I got one return, two supplies. Two supplies. But what's cool is that since they are lights, you sell dummies that actually don't have to be hooked up to a duct to supply or pull air right. from the space, but it still remains with the same aesthetic right. in terms of lighting. So we got, we've got the, the supply here, we got a supply here, we got a return here, but we have one that looks identical to it over here, right. but it's actually just a light right. that just looks exactly like these. Right. That way it's all the same. The same. Way. Yeah, that's great. Beautiful. Now in those dummies, do they have the, the holes and stuff around them too? Is it the same yeah, light assembly going in there? But right. it's just sealed off up there and it's right. not going anywhere. It, got exactly, it. keep it tight got in it. the house. Nice, nice. Now let me show you another interesting thing yeah. we use these same grills yeah, for. If you come in, we can see the basic, one thing I didn't mention is our UL approval we have is actually for moisture as well. Okay. So this allows us to put it into the restroom. And stall. that's the thing, like it, it, you're talking about actually uh, being rated to be in a, in a wet area. Wet right? area, right. Yeah, and that's that's the thing, like you need yeah. you need to have that for sure. So I can put now, the electricians and the AC guy, we always fight. We all want to be <laughs> over the commode, don't we? Right, right, right. No more fighting. Right. We got the light and we got the exhaust right over the commode. All one. All and one. so you walk in here and instead of having a couple of things that might be off center or whatever, you only have one thing. Right. You can put it dead center in the middle of the space right. and everything is all in one. So this exhaust, this pulls air. In your situation, we've got it hooked up to an ERV, right? right. No. So it's pulling, oh no, this one? No, yes, to an oh, ERV. Okay. Yeah, so this is hooked up to an ERV and actually pulling air from this space right and sending it out of the house right through the and ERV so, through the ERV Changing so you got uh, do you have like a boost fan that yeah, you turn on yeah you got a on? booster switch okay. we put right here so yeah the, the, so just you walk into the bathroom and just the same way you might turn on the fan you flip the switch or uh, it might be on a timer i don't know if yeah, you do 20 that 20 minute timer hey, that's actually the best way to do it in mm -hmm. my opinion but you flip the switch turn that on and then this thing just exhausts air through the ERV system it's mm -hmm. not an actual uh, an individual system it actually goes through the ERV sends it outside and that's it's also bringing air into the space as right. well in certain areas of the We're house. Changing well. our air. And you have another one over here. Is yeah, this is actually a walk in shower. Number one enemy in Houston, Texas is moisture, right? Yeah, Humidity. 100%. So let's get rid of this moisture from that shower because of the rating. We're actually allowed to put one above the. Now we got a light as right. well as another exhaust that goes right. back to the ERV as yeah. well. That's great. Okay. Now, what I find interesting in here is that we have, and this is again like keeping with the, with the aesthetic, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have. A dummy. Right. Right. But we also have three supplies. Three supplies. So we have three supplies. Now, in a normal bathroom, you're not going to three, see three supplies. But the reason, I guess, why we do is because you got a larger duct running over here and you're splitting it off into three different ones. Right. Is that correct? Right. We got to keep this room pressurized for the exhaust to work correctly so we don't have the smells going into the dwelling. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want that. We got to take care of the homeowner. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. That's, that's pro uh, priority number one is to take care of the homeowner for sure. Yeah. You guys, now I got Trammel with Hun Distribution here, and he's going to talk to us a little about Fusion Air, and as well as Mitsubishi. So what do you got yeah. here, Trammel? Yeah, so we are the local distributor for Fusion Air and for Mitsubishi Electric right. Equipment. Uh, super excited about this house to see it come to fruition Definitely. with the different cans for great air distribution. Excellent. Yeah, I love it. So you have, as far as like this Fusion Air, I mean, like this is definitely a product I've never seen before. What are your thoughts on the innovation here and, and how it's coming together? I think it's a, it's a great idea because as houses get tighter and tighter, and especially this house, people care about penetrations in the ceiling and all that. Definitely. And so you think about how much penetration is used for return and supply duct. Um, and you can utilize the cans for the air. Yeah, it's pretty smart. cool to, to have them, you know, dual purpose like that. Really cleaning up what's going on up there. Mm -hmm. Because I know like even in my house, like, uh, you know, where the lights are fixed are situated and where the returns are situated and how many of them are there. Is it an even number? Is it an odd number? Like usually when we're going for lighting, we're going for aesthetic, right? right? But that isn't really the case when it comes to HVAC. But now that we are integrating that into one, uh, you know, we're really able to achieve a better aesthetic and essentially better performance. Really. Yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of jealous because I walk <laughs> around my house and I'm like, 
man, I got all these bl these curved <laughs> blade grills everywhere. I'm like, I wish I had fusion throughout my totally house. Totally feel it too. Yeah, I'm feeling that too for sure. So uh, another thing, um, you guys distribute Mitsubishi products, right? Yes. This house uh, is going to have an, uh, or actually already has a Mitsubishi HVAC system on yes. it. So tell us about that. Tell us a little bit about Mitsubishi. So there are two P series units on this uh, with ducted multi-position air handlers. People typically think that. Mitsubishi is a wall mount unit, just something you see on the wall, but this is right the opposite. This is your traditional multi-positional air, air handler. Uh, there's two of them with the P-Series, which is, you know, the more of the, the higher end product within the Mitsubishi family. Uh, variable speed heat pumps, no backup heat at all. So uh, they didn't have to add that additional load. We were just talking about whole home generators uh, uh, just a little while ago and talking about how you don't, you, do, you don't really have to size for that electric resistance right. heat now. As I'm doing my inspections, we're starting to see more and more of this stuff, vari variable speed units. Everything is kind of starting to, to take that shift, it seems like. And, and of course, when we're talking about a house like this that is being built to high performance standards, I mean, that's definitely the way to go, you know, in terms of energy efficiency and, and just overall performance. Yeah, and, and the comfort is another thing. You know, you can look at numbers all day long and drive yourself crazy looking at numbers, but the the comfort is what I like the most about the variable speed uh, equipment. And ha the comfort that you get with the Mitsubishi with the Fusion is is just a, it comes full circle, and that's what excites me the most about it. Excellent. So Fusion Air is this available right now? Like, can anybody just go and buy this right now? Yes, we we are the distributor in town that has it. Hunting right. distribution. Right. Guys, I've got Gordon Trout here. He is the GC on this project. This is actually you're you're the GC, but this is your house. You're building your house, correct? It, 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 possibly. <laughs> possibly. I mean, possibly. We, we you know we could uh, we could sell it, but uh, but we are building it. We, we, yeah, we are building it for ourselves. Right. Right. Point. So that's the goal, right? And I mean, I, like that's really cool, right? So even if this house goes up for sale, don't you really want whoever's building your house to build it as if it was their own. <laughs> he actually is, but he could sell it if for the right price. So, uh, so that's pretty interesting. Well, Gordon, tell me, cause we're here today talking about fusion air products. Tell me about how you came about it. Like why you chose to use it, what you think the benefits are, or maybe how that relates to like the, 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 uh, uh, mechanical and the electrical combining like that. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, first off is when it was presented to me that the air conditioner guys will, will want to put their duck, right in line with where the recessed cans go or whatever, and they're all competing over the same space. Yep. The other big thing that we, the benefit that we saw, instead of uh, having exhaust fans in all of our bathrooms, he's using these and they take all of the air. And so typically you'd have a, a, a three inch hole going to the outside of your house that right. I've got to mitigate all that, uh, that right. air coming in or going out. So he's taking all of that air to our ERV system and he takes it all outside crosses it over and brings our fresh air in, in, in through all of what would be our uh, exhaust fans. So, so. It, it, all of the exhaust fans are penetrating the exterior through one penetration. That's right. And then, of course, bringing air into the ERV system. And yeah, so it's really cool because, like I said, the lights are integrated with the ducts. And so, like, they don't have to compete for space. Everything can give a really good aesthetic. How did it come? Like, were there any complications or, like, real, like, glaring benefits to having the mechanical side of things and the electrical side of things kind of combined into one like as far as the people that were installing this stuff how'd that go just the fact that i'm kind of feel like i'm the first through the wall on some of this <laughs> yeah. and uh we could have done a better job explaining all of it uh, ahead of time to the ac guy i mean we he had kind of counted on putting exhaust fans and then we uh so we did back up a little bit and, yeah. and have to re, have to rewire some stuff, but uh, we caught it early enough; it wasn't a big deal. That's what happens with innovation, yeah. though, you know. I mean, you're you know when you're first to the party, you go through those growing pains and stuff. But uh, but it seems like it's a really cool product, and I'm looking forward to seeing it in action for sure. Right. You have or have not done a blower door on this house as of yet. We've not done one yet. Do you plan to do one at the framing stage? We plan to do one. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Yep. So, um, but the way I understand it, uh, you're battling some issues with the garage. So, uh, what what is going on there that you feel like you need to seal up? Uh, that that you feel like because I just looking around and looking at the attention to detail, I almost feel like you could meet code with a blower door test today. <laughs> but code that isn't saying much. Are you shooting for passive house? What numbers are you looking for in a blower? door test do you know I, I i don't know what specifically i'm looking for i mean ideally i hit passive house uh okay. i don't know that uh i mean i, I guess depending on what my blower door test comes in sure um, then i would uh pay for that certification but you're you're looking to come in well under uh code required and you're hoping for numbers that that hit uh get you somewhere in the realm of passive house 
But you're not even saying this is a passive house until you find that no, out. No, right. that's Understood. right. All, all of the research that I, I've done to build this house, I used uh, the uh, information from passive house. Yeah. Set a high goal, and then if you know if I don't meet it, that I'm still good. I mean, we'll be we'll be great. But uh, right. uh, and then I, and from there, I'll just decide whether I want to go ahead. And I, I think it's like fifteen hundred dollars to to get the yeah, certification. I mean, if, you, certification if you're hitting your hitting your numbers, there's no there's almost no reason not to do it. But yeah, just a matter of, of hitting those numbers. But it's like you don't know what you don't measure right and so you got to measure it to know so uh you think you're going to use some spray foam or something to seal off this garage area well so um you know the uh the fly in the ointment here is you know i've sealed everything perfectly as good as i can but i've got an attached garage so i've got an 18 foot by nine foot or eight foot garage door over here so everything's going to come through here so i've got the I've, i still have to mitigate this 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 wall here i've got zip on it uh, I'm going to try to go ahead and, and, and put zip all the way around, but that still doesn't do anything with uh, my garage door. So I've got a couple little penetrations I've, I've got to work through, but yeah. that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know, we, we were talking about meeting code in terms of lower door tests, and I mean, like, you could leave that sliding window open and probably <laughs> pass a blow. You got get a code approved score with a, with a blower door, but, but you're going for much higher than that. And it feels like even at the shape that you're in, you are probably going to achieve it. However, um, you're still pushing forward to get it as tight as possible. Right. I think it's real cool to see you uh, kind of going for it with these high performance details. Right. I know that we talked a little bit about this before, but can you tell me a little bit of, of maybe where your inspiration came from for your high performance building? I guess uh, it originated probably about 15 years or, I mean, time gets away from you. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while, maybe, you know, maybe 18 years ago. So uh, we went to a, a seminar in Florida that was going to be a zero, uh, uh, I guess it's called Zero Energy. And uh, it was put on by a bunch of guys that come down from uh, Canada and up there, they, you know, try to build as tight and uh, uh, it put as much insulation as they can in houses. And they started talking about things. Uh, they pushed spray foam real hard on all the yeah, attic areas and, right. and, and doing all the spray foam. I, I didn't I didn't fall in love with that, but what I did fall in love with is uh, living in Houston, as hot as it is, I started asking myself, why are we putting our air conditioner units in a 130, 140 degree environment? It right. makes no sense at all. And then once my brain got to that, I couldn't get off of it. So yeah. that's, it just piggyback from there. I think you got a, a really cool project on your hands and it looks like it's gonna be a, a wonderful place to live. So congratulations on what you've achieved so far and I look forward to seeing the progress. Great, all right, I appreciate cool. it. Cool.